Hello all together and welcome to my online Messer session. This is Enzi speaking. I hope you all got still energy after this whole day to watch the last one on the schedule. Uh, yeah, I hope you also have a good weekend, a good dry online weekend and you saw the previous very good workshops uh, from my fellow trainers. Thanks out there for all who contributed. Um, yeah, strange times. Normally I tell people not to film my classes. Uh, now there are no people and I'm videotaping myself, which is some kind of weird if you do this at home in your private environment. So please be patient. It is my first video. Uh, so yeah, feel invited. We will talk about MESA in the next 50 minutes. Then I'm here for you for short Q&As. And maybe later on I'll meet you in the chat. Come to Wanda, join our chat room. I'll be there, other trying guys are there and it's our virtual Saturday evening dinner. Just come over and let's have a chat. And now let's dig into it and let's go to the library. So here we are now and today we're gonna talk about uh, fast and efficient method techniques. Uh, Every workshop has to have a title, so I use the title No Fancy Fencing, Things That Works If Shit Hits The Fan. What I want to say with it is that the treatises offer us a vast variety of techniques for different occasions. For show off in Klopfechten, for ordeal, uh, for self-defense, you name it. Uh, there are techniques which can be trained fast to a certain level where they already have an effect. Uh, and there are techniques which have to be trained repetitively for years and other ones, you know them, uh, are a one million shot if you bring them through. So in the first, uh, I show you six, video, uh, six videos and in the first video I will show you techniques out of a hanging guard, the upper hanging guard uh, in uh, Lekwichner it's called Pogen um, and yeah have fun with it enjoy the video and if there are questions I hope there will be a quest time for questions and answers afterwards uh, yeah let's go for it let's begin with a variety of fast and efficient counterattacks from the Pogen I think you get the basic idea, but let's watch it a little bit slower. Parry with a hanging guard, in the bind, slap away the hand, cut through his face and retreat safely with a stab. Even it looks quite simple, there are some things to watch out for. One major point is this. Pay attention that the vector of your force whilst your slap goes nearly horizontal to your left side. There's a common mistake which you really should avoid. Don't slap downwards, this might work, but more often will lead to an epic fail. Always keep in mind, never underestimate your enemy. Slapping his hand down or even inside gives him the impulse for a counter. This principle also works in combination with other counter attacks, such as an Unterhaul combined with thrust from above. Let's take the speed out to watch it more accurately. Parry slap and cut, thrust and retreat. We can also go for a friendly and non-lethal pommel strike from below. You can also add a cut to your withdraw, helpful if you missed with your pommel strike. Again a bit slower to watch the details. Parry, push, strike, cut and safe retreat. Of course this also can be done with a skull crushing pommel strike and cut from above. And here comes the slow version again. Hanging guard, push, strike, cut and thrust. In this case we use the false edge after the parry. The impact force of this cut comes from the rotative motion. Nearly all of this can also be done from an upright parry. Sometimes I get asked why not grab the hand. You can do this, but in a stressful situation, your brain has to focus on two similar tasks, grabbing the hand and parrying in a small time frame. 
you might succeed in grabbing the hand and at the end finish him off. But if he's stronger, he might turn the tide and you give him a lot of information to work with. So much for the first sequence. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And you sure might have noticed that I'm a big fan of the safe retreat. Uh, I strain the nerves of my students with this topic and <laughs> uh, I always tell them don't stop till he is fleeing or not moving or whatever and even then go for a safe retreat into distance. Um, anyway, uh, the next thing we are talking about are attacks out of the Lehmhau. The Lehmhau uh, is an expression also from Le Küchner. Lehmhau comes from Lehman, which uh, means disabling someone, uh, which is very clear if you slash the hand, he is disabled. So this is the connect between uh, the name and the techniques. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. Let us just watch the first sequence. As we all know, keeping the distance can save your life. To achieve this, we step out of his attack, hitting him with the long edge on the lower arm near the wrist, thrust from the left side to throw the face, left overhaul, and step to retreat. The lame how can also be done from below with the false edge. In slow motion we can see that after the lame how with the short edge, the blade is perfectly positioned for a left overhaul. If your lame how has a more chopping effect and stops at the arm, it's a good choice to go on with a left unterhaul. Let's watch it again. As soon as your false edge hits, drop your blade and cut upwards through the face. Of course the lame works from the left side too. We show you one example with the short edge from above. Let's have a look at the key points of this lame combination. Avoiding the path of his blade by stepping to the left, hitting his lower arm near the wrist, cutting his throat, cutting the left side of his face and thrust. So much for things you can do with and out of the Limhau. Uh, yeah, like the topic Bogen Limhau could fill weekends of workshops, uh, but we have to go on. So the next topic will be more close combat. So for those who like to bring people to the floor, that's something for you. After the sequence, I will tell you a small thing uh, as an addition to it. As announced, if you feel more comfortable with close combat, this might be something for you. If you want to make this work well, you need to cause pain, have a tight lever and constantly change the direction of force you apply. Immediately close the line and parry in a hanging guard. With your left hand, flap over his wrist and grab him tight. Strike into the pit of his elbow with your hand and simultaneously with the pommel at the outside of the elbow. Rip the elbow to the right side of yourself. Put the blade on his throat and close the lever on the hand and the elbow whilst bringing him down to the earth. Now additionally, from another perspective, to give you an idea of the side-to-side -side movement and some details. Parry, flap and grab, strike, rip, close the lever and cut him down. To minimize the risk of injuries but still be able to train the motion pattern, there is an exercise I recommend without weapons. So this was a funny and fast and efficient way to bring someone on the floor. Um, to keep him there is another topic. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add something to the uh, didactic uh, weapon, the weaponless didactics at the end. Um, the idea behind it, I know that it's not the same if you do it bare hands or with the mesa. But uh, like before you use the tool, a tool, you have to learn to fight without a tool. 
uh, uh, then you add distance and the weapon and it will work. So in the situation where you have this hook which is not really an attack yeah but it brings your hand to the place where the hand is after the poem parry when you take over your hand is here so for your brain is bringing my hand up here bringing my hand up here and the next thing is if you hook with the grip into the elbow it's the same like position here is taking control and the other one is hooking with the grip is the same like hooking with the hand so you have the same movements with this and this is something you train and then the next thing is to rip and throw so this is also something which is in the body mechanics the same without a weapon and with a weapon keep this in mind find such training tools to gain speed in your training to simulate body mechanics when you don't want to hurt the other one with the weapon but you want to speed up your training uh, uh, yeah use this I've got a lot of good experience with it so the next one will stay in the close distance the next one will be a shoulder lever which for sure much of you will recognize but the details are tricky and you still have a weapon as an add-on this time we want to get him into a predicament from the Überlaufen a classical shoulder lever combined with a sharp and pointy tool to intensify your arguments. Nevertheless, not only the perfect timing is important, also repetitive training is needed to instinctively find the perfect pressure spot between the shoulder joint and the shoulder plate to make the lever work. But once you've got it internalized, it's a smoothly way to gain control. If you try this, please take care of your partner. Don't exaggerate, because the shoulder joint and the connected ligaments are very vulnerable. Strange title? Yes, but there's a reason for it. This technique works against cuts from below, in this case a left Unterhau. To get it the flow, we start with an Oberhau. There's the Unterhau, and this is why I use the mnemonic phrase thrust to the floor. There's the cut to the belly and the step to retreat. A proper displace of his blade with your hilt occurs when you push directly to the floor next to his foot. If you don't, as an example, you push to the side, you create an opening. Here is another possibility after you have pushed him from the lower bind. Let's watch it again. As soon as the blades have strong contact in the lower bind, push away his blade, cut with the false edge to the head and cut upwards through the face. So yes, we use every part of the messer, even the hilt, to fence and to attack the opponent. Yeah, the last uh, video sequence uh, is now waiting for you and it's a very special thing i have a personal nickname for it i call it highway to hell for those who have been in my workshop uh, uh, and we reached the funny part at the end uh, i'm sure you know what i mean and for the other ones who don't know what it is enjoy it and yeah try it a fierce disarm your opponent won't notice anymore I think this time a slow motion really is needed. Close the distance as fast as possible, catch his blade, hook behind his grip and pull, same time push on his blade and you will slide directly to his face. From this perspective you have a good view on the push and pull effect and how it guides you to your target. If you apply the push and pull motion in a correct way, the hilt will hit the hand. This uncomfortable situation will help you to take his messer. I'm sure you know now what I meant before with a nice and fierce and mean technique. Uh, uh, yeah, try it out with your trainings partners and if they don't know it, they will be surprised.
yeah thanks for watching this was my shortest workshop in the last 20 years i really hope to see you soon in real life in maybe in your training hall in our training hall at an event at a workshop wherever but hopefully in real life uh, stay safe and sound and just one invitation at the end there still might be q and a's if i don't talk too long now and in the evening we have our wonder chat join us maybe trainers are online we are online we will be your hosts and yeah thanks for being here ciao